After the introduction of traffic wardens back in the early 60s, parking's never been easy. Today, local authorities earn a huge £328 million, handing out over £10 million parking fines a year. But, crucially, more than 165 tickets are successfully appealed and cancelled every day. And now one man is trying to put the brakes in what he thinks are illegal charges. The ultimate parking crusader. And he's taken a fight all the way to the High Court. Meet Neil Heron. He's one almighty noisy parker. He spent five years and £90,000 loudly campaigning for fairer parking. In the dock, controlled parking zones, the areas where curbside space is controlled by restrictions or designated parking spaces. Neil, yeah, what problem do you have with parking enforcement? I don't have a problem with parking enforcement at all, but it needs to be fair, transparent and lawful. And if you're going to be ticketed for being a minute late back to your meter or an inch over the yellow line, then the council has a duty to comply with the law themselves, and in many instances they haven't been doing that. Neil has a specific problem with controlled parking zone signs in his hometown of Sunderland. These are controlling every single single yellow line beyond this, originally intended for 12 streets or less. Give me an idea of just how far that sign is meant to cover. You got your walking boots on? Yeah. Just as many. There are no set rules on when you can park on single yellow lines, and as they vary from zone to zone, Neil believes there aren't enough signs for such a large area as this. There you go. How long has it taken us since that control parking zone sign? Uh, a good ten minutes. There's nothing on there, there's nothing on any of the buildings, nothing at all. Neil successfully appealed against a ticket here. He worships at the altar of the parking bible, the traffic signs, regulations and general directions 2002, seeing as you ask. These include a raft of rules councils should be sticking to, but not many motorists are as clued up as Neil. See that single yellow line there? Aye. When is, are you allowed to park on that and when can't you I park haven't it? got a clue. I think it's at four o'clock. Uh, between nine and five. Or between eight and four. Do you think it's fair? No. I think it's typical. If people feel they've got a ticket and there could be something wrong, how can they double check? Their websites, books, what? Lots of websites, lots of regulations out there, and it's quite easy to check online. And uh, the majority of instances where people appeal are successful. Lots of us recognise the frustration of getting a seemingly unfair ticket, but Neil's clocked up over a hundred. He hasn't just been unlucky, he's been on a UK-wide mission. I used to collect parking tickets. I still do collect parking tickets if we're told that there's a restriction which is unlawful. We'll go and park in it, force the council to issue a ticket, and then we'll go and challenge the ticket and expose the illegality. The majority of those 120 have been cancelled and quashed, and the ones which are under question are the ones before the High Court. You've remortgaged your house, you're taking on the country's councils, and you're going to the High Court. Do you not feel intimidated? It's a scary place to be, but we have the law on our side and this is about fairness for Britain's motorists and they've been stealth tax for long enough and it's about time that somebody stood up to be counted and that's what I'm doing. If Neil wins the test case, it could affect millions of drivers and possibly thousands of retrospective appeals. But in the meantime, keep an eye out for those signs. Thank you, Dom. Neither the parking adjudicators nor Sunderland Council will comment until after the High Court case. But an independent review by consultants in 2008 did find that the council's parking rules were fair. So there you